kids at home, let's get our Bibles, our offering and our journals together. And let's rise up and get ready to praise Jesus. Well, this is our final week of the month of knowledge. And what is our definition of knowledge again? Oh yeah, that's right. Learning something new so you can be better at what you do. And let's not forget what our Bible scripture was for this month. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So it's like we're walking in the dark when we're by ourselves, but with God, He lights up our way with like a flashlight or a ring light or even a floodlight. He lights it up so we can see the right way to go. We won't stumble and we won't fall if we follow His word. 
All right, well, let's get back into some worship and I'll see you again in a little bit. We get to give to God. And today I want to talk to you about seeds. Have you ever thought about seeds? Did you know that when you plant a seed, that's exactly what you get? Like I have some apple seeds here in my hand. Oh, can you see it? Can you see it? You will now. There you go. So I have apple seeds in my hand. If I plant an apple seed, do you think I'm going to get an orange? No, of course not. I'm going to get an apple. So whatever I plant as a seed, that's exactly what I will get in return. The Bible says, whatsoever a man sows, that he will reap. If you sow kindness, show, sow kindness, you will reap kindness. You'll get kindness in return. And so I want to liken our giving today to a, a tree. It's called a gentle Sherman tree. You want to see what it looks like? Isn't that huge? It's a huge tree. This tree is 120 feet wide and 127 feet tall. That's super, super tall and super, super wide. It makes us humans look like tiny midgets, doesn't it? But you know what? Your giving is exactly like that. It might look like little in your hand, but when you place the little that you have or your seed that you have in the hands of God, it grows and grows and grows just like the Sherman tree. So when you give your, your offering to God, when you give your money to God and you name your seed and you will reap that harvest. So I want you to take your money. Come on, moms and dads, give the boys and girls some money, please. Because we want to sow our seed to Jesus today. Put it in your offering jar and then write a little note what you are trusting God for. Because you know what? Just like the Sherman tree was a seed, just like this small tiny seed, and it grew and grew and grew. So when you give to God, your seed grows and grows and grows. So as you give, I want you to write down what you want from God, what you're expecting, what you're trusting God for, and know that as you pray every day, believing and trusting that God will do it for you, you will end up with the general Sherman tree. Your offering will grow and grow and grow. So let's pray over our offerings today. You have it? Let's go. Father, we thank you today that as we give into your kingdom, that this seed, Lord, we planted in your garden, it will grow and grow and grow. So we thank you right now for every seed that we have sown. We trust and believe that we will reap a mighty harvest in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. All right, stay tuned for the Bible story. Easy win. 
is greater than my fears. Hey boys and girls, this is Pastor Nicole, and I'm really excited to tell you this Bible story today. And you know, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about a guy named John the Baptist. Remember, he was cousins with Jesus. But that's not why I remember him so well. I remember him because, let me think, mm, he ate bugs, he lived in the desert, he wore animal skins, he was a different sort of guy. But he got the job done. His whole purpose was to tell others about Jesus and to baptize them in water. And remember our story where Jesus came to him and said, will you baptize me? And he wasn't sure he could do the job, but Jesus said, no, I want you to baptize me. And when John was obedient and baptized Jesus, do remember God shouted with a loud voice, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. I think his voice was a bit better than mine. But he also then sent the Holy Spirit, which showed up just like a dove and landed on Jesus's head. And you know, today we're gonna pick up from there. So Jesus went on to teach about God and who God was and is and who God created people to be. Some listened, some didn't. But meanwhile, John, he kept telling people about Jesus. And he wasn't afraid to confront leaders, which means tell them, listen, you're wrong, when they were saying things about Jesus that they didn't know. During this time, a ruler named Herod Antipas was making terrible decisions. And John was telling everyone how Herod was wrong. And as you can imagine, when Herod heard about this, he wasn't happy about it. So he had John arrested, never to be free again. Now John was locked up in a dark, dingy, smelly, stinky jail cell. And I imagine that he was kind of scared. Maybe he was wondering if he would ever see his family again. Maybe he was wondering what was going to happen to him. You know, who knows what was going through John's head at that time. Originally, John's faith was so strong. He knew exactly who Jesus was. He preached about Jesus. He told people all about Jesus. He even baptized Jesus, remember? But now, John locked up in this cell, he had a question. And for John, this was a really big question. And we're going to read what John asked. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Matthew, which is in the New Testament, chapter 11, verse 3. That's Matthew, chapter 11, verse 3. And it says, Are you the one who is supposed to come? Or should we look for someone else? Wow! You see, in that moment, John was wondering, did I do all of this? Did I tell people about Jesus? Did I get myself arrested for the right guy? Did I, did I do the right thing? Are you really the really true son of God? And what's awesome is Jesus didn't get upset and go, what? How dare you ask me that? Of course I am who I say I am. Of course I am who, you know, God's son. He didn't get upset about it at all. In fact, he welcomed the question. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 11, verses 4 through 6 to see what Jesus' response was. Go back to John. Report to him what you see and hear. Blind people receive their sight. Disabled people walk. Those who have skin diseases are made clean. Deaf people hear. Those who are dead are raised to life and the good news is preached to those who are poor blessed is anyone who does not give up their faith because of me the people who john sent to ask this question listened to the answer memorized it and walked all the way back to john and gave him the answer you see jesus knew that john could be a bit discouraged and that he just needed to know that all that he had done was worthwhile. All that he had done meant something. You know, and sometimes we do things, maybe we do good things for people 
and we don't hear a thank you or we don't hear good words back, kind words back in return. And we wonder, did it even mean anything? Did me giving an apple to the teacher, did it really touch her life? Did me giving a note to my mom, did it really help her get through her day? Did making my bed make a difference? Hmm. Well, John was in that spot and he was in prison. He was in a tough spot, but Jesus understood and he answered his question. And that goes right into our bottom line, which says, when you don't know what God says, ask. Maybe you don't know what God has planned for your life, or maybe you don't know that God says he loves you. If you don't know something about what God is saying, you can ask and it's okay. I can ask God, God, what is going on today? And he'll answer me. Or I can say, God, I just need a touch from you. I need to know that you are real today. I need to feel your presence. And amazingly enough, God answers. And it's so wonderful to know that even though God is invisible, he still hears you, he still sees you, and he still loves you bigger and greater than you can ever think of. You know, what's the biggest love you can think of? God loves you even bigger than that. So I want to encourage you boys today, don't be afraid to ask God your questions. And don't be afraid to ask for help if you read something in the Bible that you don't understand or that you hear something about God that you don't understand. You know, you can ask for help. You can ask your mom, you can ask your dad, you can ask your Sunday school teacher, you can ask somebody you trust with your questions about God, and you can go to God directly yourself and ask your questions. He's not afraid of them. He's big enough to answer them and he's smart enough too because he is the smartest one in the entire universe. I mean, outside of the universe, like bigger than the universe because God made the universe. Wow, that's pretty smart. And that's our God. Well, boys and girls, that's our story for today. I trust that you enjoyed it, that you had a good time, and that God showed you something special in it. Remember that no matter what your question is, God loves you and has an answer for you. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I thank you so much that you are so good. You always hear us and you answer our questions. We thank you, Lord, that as we come to you, you are faithful, you are good, you are trustworthy, and we can put all of our faith, all of our hope, and all of our trust in you. I pray that you bless the children, that you protect them and their families, that you show them something more about who you are and how amazing you are this week. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Well, have a great week. I love you. And we look forward to seeing you here at Hope Kids at Home soon. Bye for now.